What's up everyone, Danny Warbucks here, and today we are continuing our playthrough of The Call of Cthulhu. Uh, Karen is our keeper of this series, so I'm going to let him catch us all up to speed, because we haven't played in a really long time, and I don't remember what's going on. <laughs> Alright, that's fair. Uh, Alright, well, uh, with a recap for the uh, party, and for everyone listening, uh, the party... Uh, bunch of Americans are sent to Europe to track down uh, some hieroglyphic writing on a sarcophagus they had. Uh, they met a uh, Dr. Smith in England who was telling about a very powerful artifact named the set of cars Simulacrum. He was going to go on a trip throughout Europe to collect the pieces of it that was broken up at one point. Uh, but he was grievously wounded uh, on an attack from his house and he sent the party of, of uh, Americans in his stead to track down the pieces of this simulacrum. From there, the party had their trials and tribulations through a, a train in the middle of nowhere, which was kind of odd. Uh, one of their party members got uh, grievously scared of, of trains from that point, which is funny because uh, this adventure takes place on trains. They eventually made their way to Paris, where they learned more about the set of car simulacrum and a gentleman by the name of uh, Fenelik Comp, or Comp Fenelik, and uh, they were able to track down uh, through research in the Paris uh, libraries. One of the pieces of the simulacrum uh, seemed to be located in the old uh, cellar uh, of. Uh, the house where the Fenelik used to live in the uh, early 1800s. Uh, upon arriving there, they were about to seize the piece. There was a left arm piece, and a uh, creature appeared as if from smoke uh, into a man. And uh, as a reaction to that, the uh, resident uh, paranoid person, Boomer, uh, drew his weapon. Uh, unfortunately, it was not quick enough, and the creature decapitated Boomer, you know, removing him from the, this uh, little adventure, unfortunately. Uh, they were able to uh, strike a bargain with this creature so as to not uh, all be uh, killed. And they were able to get this one piece, and they're on their way. Uh, they, they went back to Paris and got on the train to uh, Lusain to continue trying to track down pieces of this simulacrum. When they got on the train, you know, no big deal. Uh, they met a, a, a journalist who was traveling throughout Europe by the name of John Everyman. He's gonna, you know, kind of tagging along with the group, interested in what they're doing. Uh, they had a wonderful night or a wonderful day and, and, and night to uh, you know, rest on the train, at which point they all went to sleep and woke up in a a dreamland, uh, per se. A, uh, a land of... Uh, they woke up in a land which was just filled with cats. Cats everywhere. Uh, running around. Uh, and they got... They, they met a man named uh, Henry. He seemed to be the conductor of the train. He handed them a ticket, and they all got on board this, this train. And the, uh, the train departed. And that's where we left off the party. They were just getting on the train. And this, this dreamland train, it looked, it looked uh, menacing. It was a menacing looking, looking train. Um, you know, pulled up, looked like that uh, on the screen. But it, when they get inside, it's very plush, very beautiful inside. Uh, wood, deep, dark wood paneling with pearl inlay throughout the entire thing. Gold uh, filigree on top of that with crown molding along the top. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, Brandon is the, the most uh, affluent of the group. And even this is opulent for, for Brandon's day, for, for Brandon. I mean, this, is, this is wealth beyond the idea of wealth. Just the most ridiculous of, of, uh, of wealth. Uh, when you were at the train station waiting for, waiting for the train to arrive, there were three people standing there. A older woman, a uh, portly man, and a... Uh, man with a big, bushy, dark beard. More of a Slavic look to him. And uh, that's it. 
that's where we're at right now. So you're on, just got on the train after uh, you guys get on there. The, the uh, porter slash conductor sort of person, Henry. Walks, hey, welcome to, to my train. I'm so happy that you could join us here. Uh, as you as he's talking, you see Catch just running towards the back of the train, just on either side of you. Um, we're, uh, we'll be departing shortly for uh, the, the next stop in the, in this journey to uh, Dalaf Lean. On the way there, we will have a, a banquet. Uh, but uh, in, until then, uh, you can uh, make yourselves comfortable in your, your state rooms. Yeah, where are those? Um, well, you uh, you guys are back in the, the uh, you're at the uh, second sleeping car. That's where you're, you you boarded on the uh, up in the uh, up in the baggage is where you entered. So you just have to make your way back to the second sleeping car. Wait, there's a whole compartment for cats. I was just looking at the exact same thing. Ah, uh, yes, this is the uh, the the. the, the, the Obviously, you can see you can just see cats, and there are lots of cats on here. And you can just see droves of them, you know, running back towards the back. You'll see like a mom with like six kittens just running to the back. And uh, yeah, are yes, there's a there's a there's a car for the the cats. Yes. Are the kitties friendly? Oh yes, they're they're, they're cats. They're they're wonderful creatures. Can I can I? Uh, they're moving pretty quickly. They don't really, they're not sticking around. For, like, for I'm big. Like, I can just swoop down and... Come here, you little bugger. Oh, they, they don't like being picked up without their permission. Oh. And, uh... He, uh, he, he gets to the... He, like, crouches down to the ground. And, uh, there's some cats that are kind of lingering behind. But not, you know, the actual full-size cats. And he kind of... He... He says something, but it's, it's not in a language that anyone can understand. But the cat looks at him, and something emotes back from the cat. Same sort of weird language. And uh, then he kind of stands up and looks at you. Um, then oh, we're going to go back <laughs> to the car for a moment. I, I heard could probably uh, maybe find one later during the banquet if, if one is around. Um, but uh, uh, let me walk you to your compartments, and he kind of walks you back through this uh, giant uh, bathhouse kind of area. It's uh, just this pools. There's there's a, a large pool in the center, and then there's separate individuals. There's large, you know, 1920s bathtubs that are just giant size. You can fit your full body in, and just without any issue. Very comfortable, very, very, very neat. Then the giant pool in the center, it's all the steam is, is up in the area as well. It's very, again, just as opulent and uh, extravagant as, as the car you came in on, the baggage car you came in on that had the pearl inlay and the, and the deep wood. This this is even you know, more extravagant. There's ivory running along the, uh, the sides of the compartment. It's just beautiful. Um, he takes you back through the sleeping car part, sleeping one, and you can see individual rooms in each one. And then he takes you to sleeping car apartment two, where the four or the five of you are at. And uh, he's just like, each of you can have a compartment, and there's there's compartments on each side, no problem. There's actually one left over on the very end, without any issue, uh, or size wise. They're, they're just as beautiful as the they're, they're just laid out just like the Orient Express ones, only they're wider. Um, they have a uh, amber and green and orange lanterns to shed warm and lavish light throughout the room. Uh, the walls, uh, the walls are just you know they, they can be uh, basically you know how in the in the, the the Orient Express you had like a room and then another room next to it and that was your full compartment. You can actually go to the walls and just open up the walls so that it's one giant room for you. They uh, contain, contain luxurious uh, covers with rich furs and and robes and just there's a uh, there's a giant um, sandalwood trunk at the foot of the each each bed that contains robes and jeweled turbans and 
and other other things, uh, blankets, and, and there's also a rack of iridescent silk dresses. It's just uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, stuff there for you, as well as, um, uh, yeah, a, a one side of the room. If you if you don't want to bathe in a room with everyone else, there's actually a, a tub in each room that will you know you can fill if you have filled with water or whatever you like. Just amazingly large. So are there like twelve rooms basically between uh, sleeping one and sleeping two? Um, it's hard to gauge these. Uh, you would think there's only six in this compartment, but or in this 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 carriage. But when you walked through five, you you could swear you saw like nine. And you can, from what you can tell, both of these cars seem like they're the same size. Okay. So, so, so the outside of this train looked all spooky and tentacle. Are there any tentacles on the inside? No. Uh, no no tentacles you can see in the inside. Outside you can see tentacles and legs moving around and churning. If you look out a window in, in the room you're in, you can look out and look down and you'll see tentacles you know, kind of oscillating. Uh, they're not really moving because you haven't left the station quite yet. Uh, but inside no tentacles it's like you know, beautiful and you you know how in a train you can feel a sort or sort of rumble from the engine there's no kind of vibration through uh throughout well that is of course because there were no tentacles on the outside of the train it was simply just a shared delusion we obviously ingested something uh during our travels i'm sure all is well also, um, I, I, I asked this last time, and obviously I don't know, uh, who actually sleeps with a gun, like on their person? Oh, well, not Fred I, does. I test guns. Fred does? Okay, anyone else? Nope. Not at John Everyman, I'm sure? Nope. I'm pretty sure I don't even own a weapon. <laughs> okay. Um, no, it's, you know, why I'm, just, I'm but a simple reporter. Why would I need a weapon? Sure. No, no that's they gotcha. Okay. okay. So, Mr. Brown has Mr. Moore pistol. So Fred. So Mr. Moore did have a pistol. In hey, yes, it. I, for this, uh, for this I thought screen. Crumb has his pistol and his uh, shotgun. Yeah, he sleeps with the pistol. Yeah, so, no, I mean, as far as like the weapons, Mr. Crumb, I think has both of them in his uh, super fancy armed trunk right but i'm just talking about sleeping right now you fred sleeps with a gun yeah no it's a, yep yep right. fred uh, cool. you notice something as you're you're walking by the, the the swing of your holster um feels off feels bulkier than 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 you suspect it would for a, a handgun and you're you're in your full suit so you can't see it but if you want to try to pull out your gun you can Okay, uh, well, I mean, I'd, I'd obviously go into privacy, you know, and into a room that was given to me, uh, and I'd look. Okay, uh, you find a, uh, longsword. Very good. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, did you say longsword? Yes, she has a longsword, he has a longsword. Um, again, the design is, is beautiful, it's got, like, a pearl handle with, uh, like a leather looping on the on it and it's like a nice little pommel on, on the pommel and then you know it's got the you know the, the guards the guards are very you know detailed design like a, a very it's an iron look but it's it's very well designed iron and it's a long sword did we have a place to store our luggage on this train i'm sorry did we have a place to store our luggage on this train um there, wasn't there a chest at the end oh, of the each baggage train? compartment yeah, the baggage and paddock. You didn't really bring some luggage with you unless you are on on this trip. So you should have what you have with you right now. You can bring luggage later, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Not me. Um, Fred, yeah. is, oh, Fred is going to go take a bubble bath. A big old bubble bath in the bathhouse. All right. Um, <laughs> well, um, yes, get settled in and... Um, We'll, we'll sound the chime for when uh, the banquet is. Uh, it will take a, a little bit of time to get to 
uh, to the next stop, to the uh, the Lothleen. Once we get there, um, I'm sure we'll, we'll uh, go from that point. Um, yeah, when you got on board, yeah, you, 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 there was other people with you, but uh, yes, it'll take about six hours to get to Dunlothly. Uh, at which point we'll, um, we'll go from there. So um, yes, yeah, so just settle in, and yeah, we'll start, we'll sound the gong when it's time to drink. Uh, also. Um, we will be going to the Gulf of Nodens in three days, so if you wish to um, create a uh, dream artifact to, uh, that represents the fears you wish to discard, uh, you can uh, create that as well. Uh, but keep in mind, once you once you discard your fears through the in the Gulf of Nodens, uh, you will uh, never be able to ride this train again. So just keep that in mind. I'm sorry. If we do what? Well, if, if you wish to get rid of a fear you have, uh, you can crea- create a, a dream artifact. And then when we get to the Gulf, you can just cast it in. You will not have a fear of whatever it is any longer. Is this a symbolic ritual? Or, I mean, I, I'm all for playing along with superstitions, but I don't see the, the practical purpose of, of what, what we're trying to do that you don't have a fear anymore or there's certain something in your life you want to no longer obsess about, you can create an artifact to represent that fear or compulsion. And when we get to the Gulf of Nodens, you can throw it in and you will no longer have that fear or compulsion. That's is is it word. required that we participate in this ritual? No. I said if you want to do that, you, oh. you don't have to, you don't have to do anything. You're here to enjoy yourselves and you know eat wonderful foods and yeah again we will have uh, we will have a uh, you know, just have a wonderful time on my train. That's what I want people to do. Hopefully you will do that. Um, I must attend to other things before we leave the station. So if you would, uh, I must take my lever. If you need anything, uh, just. Uh, I have a question. Do you like own this train? This this is my train, yes. Wow, man, this is a this is a really nice train. It's, it's wonderful. All the all, all the things on it are uh, something I've worked really hard to create. So yes. Uh one, one rule to keep in mind, uh, when we're when we're moving, don't throw anything off the train. Uh, it will be returned to you or to me. So just don't do that. That's all. What I if uh, what if we jump off the train? Then you will be returned to the train. Oh, okay. Anything uh, that leaves the train or tries to leave the train, well, my uh, the, the the creatures that I'm using to to move us will grab you with their tentacles and pull you back in. You cannot leave. All right. But um, I must go. Um, just uh, there's a there's a he shows you this this very this lace uh, rope you can pull on and uh, the speaker is right there and then you can just say what you want in the speaker and uh, it, it'll show up uh, eventually. Uh, but again, I must go and um, yes, and he kind of just turns heel and, and walks out of the rooms or the main room you guys were in. Uh, so you guys settle in? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Sure. Yeah, Fred is going to go to that bathhouse. That sounds fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, for one, will be uh, visiting the men's saloon. Can you use Sounds like the place to go. Yeah, how do women get to the ladies' parlor since they have to go through the men's saloon? They can go through. It's not, against it's not against <laughs> the ladies' parlor. How would you guys get to the cat car if, if you couldn't go through the ladies' parlor? Are we allowed to go to the cat's compartment? Uh, at, at, an, at some point later, yes. Oh. Wait, Did so it? is the cat's compartment, like, is the compartment the equivalent of a parlor 
for men or a saloon for ladies? The cat compartment is where the cats sleep and live, so... No? Um... It's... No. Can can you explain that uh, a little bit, please, sir? It is unusual, is it not, that there are so many felines on board the, the ring? I, I don't... Try and do a persuasion or fast talk roll. No! Not dice rolls! My yes. mortal enemy! Yes, persuasion or fast talk. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me find him. Uh, oh, that's pretty bad. Where's fast talk? Is that under language? No. Am I stupid? Or persuade. Uh, it looks uh, fast talk is under art and craft skills. Oh yeah. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna. <laughs> 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 Nope. He's just like, um, you know, that's, that's just how it is in this dream world. Any Anything else before I go? Yeah, I want to check out the, the bed. It's easy to sleep in dream world, I wonder. I'm sorry? I, I think it, it's easy to sleep in dream world. I wonder if we can take a nap. Sure. Yeah, what the if gone you went to dream uh, dream world. What is there to do in dream world? You can go to the saloon. You can go to the um, bathhouse. You can you know read a book in your sleeping apartments. Um, how long will it be before we arrive at our next destination? Uh, about six hours uh, to the next de- next destination. And he looks at his watch. It's like, well, it's 6 p.m., so we should be there about midnight. When you guys went to sleep, it was 10 p.m. in your world. In our world? You're, you're losing me again. No, this is just me out, you know, explaining out. Oh, okay. Yeah, good. Um, Do you have a newspaper? Uh, when you look down, uh, there's like a, there's a uh, coffee table in the room that you're in. And there's newspapers from New York, San Francisco, Tokyo, Germany, London, and Paris. All in the native languages. Are the dates correct? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. What is the date again? The date that you guys are currently at is, uh, I believe, February 7th. Let me double check. Uh, yeah, no, it's February 3rd. February 3rd, 1923. Mm-hmm. So, two people to the bathhouse. Yeah, I was going to go to the bathhouse with uh, Mr. Crow. Okay. To the saloon! To the saloon! If you want, there's robes there you can disrobe in your sleeping compartment and then put on these robes and walk to the, the bath the bathhouse that way. Uh, I suppose so. Okay. I'll put on my uh, my speedo. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, Fred, Fred thinks that he's just in a dream. You know, I mean, technically it is a dream, but he heavily just does not think anything is out of the ordinary so he's gonna just go into the bathhouse as is and just strip down naked as a jaybird and just dip in sure no that you know when you get in there when you guys get into the uh, bathhouse um you the the air is very scented to a, like a lavender and then like a bay root or bay rum sort of smell just you know the the the, the beautiful uh, sense just just overlay on top of each other in a uh, a wonderful you know robust smell uh you'll notice that you know the woman that you saw before is in there and uh, the portly gentleman is in there as well and uh, they are both quite nude uh, in their individual baths it's not uncommon apparently for people to be quite uh not ashamed of their uh, nudity in this in this realm. Dang old so you Europeans. Gotta, 
<laughs> go to the um the, to the go to the, the, the saloon uh it's like uh there are hookahs that stand at the ready in the saloon with uh dozens of bottles glinting on racks on one end and there's haunches of venison ribs of beef and mighty loaves of brown bread that stand on a sideboard along with every condiment you could possibly think of Go. Let's see here. All right. Good. So, you uh, jump in the tub, Fred. You, you jump in the tub, uh, Brandon. Yes, grab a dub dub. Are you guys right next to each other? Or are you guys giving yourself space? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll stay with my buddy. I'll yeah, just, we're both. I got that American decency going on. <laughs> right. All right. Um, and, uh, yeah, damn it. Okay. Um, okay. And, uh, so you guys go to the men's saloon. Uh, do you do anything special while you're there or just gonna uh, sit there? Is there a specific liquid? I'm sorry? Drink. You yeah. Drink. Drink. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, the, the, the finest of brandies and uh, whiskeys are there. Think of Blue Label, only better. Just the most delicious tasting of liquors you could ever have. And you seem to affect you just as much as... <laughs> I know like you know, you're in a quote-unquote quote unquote dream world. Hello, it hello. seems like it's actual alcohol. The venison tastes wonderful. Ribs just as good. So you guys get there and uh, get lists or start drinking. Uh, the Slavic looking man is in that uh, hanging out. Uh, so in the so you guys are soaking in the in the tub for about thirty minutes probably. And uh, do you guys, you, you're talking and you closing your eyes. How are you guys handling? Yeah, I'm going to look around. Are there, are there cats in the bathhouse too? Uh-huh. Yeah. There's there's some. There's like a group of three or four in, in one corner. Um, are there any cats that like, like water? Yeah, there's a few. There's a few. Uh, in the big pool in the middle, there's there's at least, you know, half dozen cats in there. Yeah, They're I'm going to kind of like wait over near the cats that are in the water. Be like, okay. hey. Buddy. They uh, look at you. Uh, now, uh, when you were walking through the town, do you remember if you stepped on one or not? I uh, uh, found this. You guys did the, uh, the, the dexterity checks. Brandon, you, you succeeded. No, that was the same. Oh, I succeeded. Okay. No, I did not step on No, you, you didn't step on a cat. No. John did, and it looks like Brandon did. And Fred Wait, did. I am Brandon. I stepped on I a cat? I don't remember that. Wait, did I step? Did Brandon step on a cat? Brandon, you succeeded. I'm going back on the dexterity oh, check. No. Brandon, you succeeded. Uh, I, used, I, like, I used luck points. I do remember using luck points. points. You used luck not to, okay. Yes. But David and John both failed. Okay. Yeah. But Carl, Brandon, and Fred did not. Okay, good. So they uh, see you approaching and they, you know, they swimming over, and you're not being threatening anyway. They, uh, they don't uh, pay you any mind. You, if you start petting them, they will will stay. But it's 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 more about a larger cat, like a uh, savannah cat, if you know the the, the type. Savannah cats. Yeah, they're larger. They're more uh, prone to, to enjoying spending time in water. They're so cute. So you got like three or four savannas. They are large. These guys, you know. They're they're big and long and bodies, are, giant. Are, are they I don't know what stuff? this means, so we're gonna. Uh, go yeah, they're shittering back and forth. Uh, the yeah, they're they're shittering back and forth an as you cat, them, but You can't quite understand what they're saying. Is it just a regular. You don't speak their language. Cat guys, the largest I'll just, I'll just, in the largest domestic animal. Look around, and I guess that's that's we all I can do. Now you can pet them if you want. They're 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 you know they're one of them is basically. 
one of them doesn't want to get in the water, and so it's sitting like right on you know, maybe the left side awesome. on where the lip of the water is, kind of resting its head uh, on your shoulder. It's like the yeah, size of a There's another dog. one that's kind of across your lap, looking up at him, uh, and they're chittering back and forth. And then there's like two more smaller ones. You look like they're they're the kittens of the one that's in the water, kind of just splashing off to your right. So. It sounds like paradise. <laughs> Fred, are you? You're in a. You're in an individual tub. You wanted the bubble yeah, bath, right? Yeah, but uh, are there cats around me too? Uh, do you are you just looking around while you're in the tub? Or are you closing? Yeah. Up? yeah, you look around. Okay. Um, give me a. Let's see what kind of check I need to get inside. Give me a spot hidden check. I'm not paying attention to the game at all now because cool um you notice something is is like right behind do you know how the the old bathtubs look where it's like a large a large upper back and mm -hmm. it, it, it slows down it's got the little animal? legs on all four corners like it's very large. Yeah. yeah very large tub um you see something you know basically hop up behind you on the on top of that there and as you turn around, you I see this look at tiny that. black cat. Oh, that's like amazing. A, I mean, it's, a, it's a curious, How it's looking at you very curious. Today? Tiny. Uh, you uh, come around here often, and he's going to give him, like, chin scratches. And he uh, immediately nuzzles into your hand, and it's just Freaking like, huge. you know, and then bites you, and then nuzzles back in you. you know, it's normal, normal kitten. Behavior is it, is it, it starts playing with you. Curious way. You remind me of my old kitty back home, and he's gonna, you know, start playing with him a little bit and, you know, pet him behind the ears and everything like that. Sure. Um, yeah, he's he's very engaged with me. Uh, nice. Uh, again, he's getting up on his hind legs and, and swinging at your hands and. You know, doing the whole fight, kid, and play fighting thing with you, you know. Um, um, I'm trying to think of the name of that dog that I, uh, I talked to. Dang, what's his name? Oh! The dog you talked to? In the, uh, yeah, in the, in the, in the catacombs. Name, or in the, in the catacombs, I mean. Give me a history roll and see if you remember his name. Oh, no. <laughs> uh... I can scroll up forever. I, I know the name of the dog, but I mean, oh, no. I died. You died. Fred doesn't know. Fred doesn't know. Right, well. uh, Heather doesn't know. <laughs> I know. I know the name. Um, history. Oof. No. Oof. Fred, you don't. You don't remember. You know. You remember speaking to something. You don't know. You don't remember the name of it. But um. Suddenly, you see uh, the little cat head jerk up and look over towards uh, the exit of the room. And as well as the rest of you, you see the cats all kind of perk up and they all start running towards the sleeping part, compartment one. And they'll just take off, all of them. Just haul at it. So, uh... um, back to you guys in the. In, real fast, but with the guys in the, in the bathhouse. You, you see the other guests starting to get up. And uh, you know, make their way back to the sleeping compartments. Uh, then one of them turns to you guys aren't moving yet, and they're like, "Oh, you, you guys are new here. Uh, the banquet's going to start in I don't know about 20 minutes. So you may want to get back to your rooms and maybe dry off and put on some clothes." Is is there like a char uh, a chime or an alarm or some kind of indicator that this is happening? Or do they all just like zombie walk, like stand up and wordlessly yeah. start leaving? <laughs> like... yeah, well, in, the, in the bath cart, they they all saw the cats get up and leave, so that they're like, "Oh well, they, they they the people that are in the bathhouse know, hey, it's time to go." Uh, yeah, and then the same weird. in the same in the men's saloon, the, the 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 cats all get up and make their way forward into. Or no, backwards into the bank, you know, the banquet hall area. And they're going to the back towards the banquet hall. And you see the the Slavic guy kinda he's looking he's reading his paper, he kinda looks over, sees the cats go, and he's like, I've got about twenty minutes. 
<clears throat> he doesn't really move. He's just kind of sitting there. Eh, 20 minutes. And he goes back to reading his paper. Yeah, you guys see the cats. And you see the cats from, from in the in the front apartment come running past you into the banquet hall. And you can see, like, you know, water from the cats that were in the water, you know, trailing behind them. And something interesting happens to the floor. As the water comes, you see, like, a pool of water for maybe a uh, half second or so, and then it seems to get enveloped in the floor and go away. Okay. <laughs> what, uh, what do you think that's about? Uh, this still makes entirely sense to me. I think I need more to drink. Okay. Should you guys stay in the bathhouse? Or... Probably uh, some kind of pump generating pressure behind there to make the water move like that, do you think? Yeah, Fred's gonna get out and dry off and go put on. Is there like other clothing in his room? Yeah, there's there's robes and and uh, there's like uh, very finely, you know, there's you know some generic pants in there, generic shirt if you wanted to put them on. They're very flamboyant. He will put them on. Oh okay. yeah. <laughs> Is there anyone else in the saloon besides like us? Yeah, there's the this, this Slavic man and then you two. Uh, how does he appear to be dressed, like, by comparison? Um, he is, um... Get to him. Try to get to him. Uh, there you go. He's dressed in a, like, a, a big, heavy kind of jacket. Per se, with white white collar coming around that it's 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 a, it's a single it's, there's no collar it's like a no collar shirt, um, buttoned all the way up to the top with another collar coming up around the around the sides a white collar coming around the sides and then like a fur line of, you know, seems to be coming out from from where the seam is in the front of the shirt all the way down the front of his his thing he seems to be wearing like a half cape off his left shoulder with the black and red embroidering on it. Finally dressed, okay. So, yeah. but, uh, Very fun. you know, I'm listening to the description and he kind of sounds like a Dracula. Is he... <laughs> it's not It's not a Dracula, right? I... You... You're not a lord. <laughs> I don't know. Is he have to talk to him yet? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nami, thank you for the gift sub, baby. Appreciate that very much. Uh, K. Vampires again. Welcome to the family. That sounds weird in context. <laughs> he uh, he notices you're looking at him. He puts his paper down. But, you know, it's always great to see new people on board the train. You know, always people coming to take care of their problems. Oh, it'll be so liberating once we get to the the Noden. The what now? The Gulf of Mars. Uh, I'm sure the I'm sure Henry talked to you about that, where you can you can create your dream artifact and you can cast your fear or, or whatever it is holding you back in real life into the node. Hey, is this like a, a tourist destination? Like, is it something that they sell to people that ride on the train? There's got to be a gimmick, right? Like, do do I need to buy the materials? Is that it? Like what's a little, a little peculiar? Um, well, <laughs> I don't really understand what you're talking about, gimmick and and, and, and things of that nature. He, Henry is as he seems. I mean, he's always been so good to me on the when I came on the train. Uh, um, let me introduce myself. I am Monsignor Karakov. I've been uh, on this train uh, many a times. And this is, it's always such a wonderful trip. What was uh, that name? Can you put it in chat? Sure. It's ringing bells. Are, aren't we supposed to be looking for... I know we're not just, you know, having a good time in the uh, saloon in the bathroom. We're, like, we're looking for someone, right? 
<laughs> it's not him? Okay, cool. Oh, but he's, he, he looks like he'd be a very stern fellow. Once he starts talking, he's got this jovial smile. Oh, my God. Room. What is going on? <laughs> really Ivo Shinami and Kevin a, a war to one-up each other with the gift subs. I appreciate that. Keep going. Don't let I her beat you, you. Those cats get me Tanami, every time. Don't let him beat you. <laughs> They're you some of my favorite it. things. Uh, in either, oh, I, either way, I, uh, MTA champ. And so half the time I just come on the train. Welcome to, see to that this. They're just really a, a treat. Oh my god, they're coming. <laughs> Puts back his, his, his newspaper and keeps reading. Yes. Yes. Uh, after, um, I don't know, about 20 minutes or so, you hear a, a gong noise. Any gong you would normally hear on a, when you would hear a gong be played. It's very... It, 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 it reverberates as if it was in Chelsea, a room is that you? you were in when it went off, like an alarm clock. It seems to echo through the entire. Oh, I like that. Thanks for the big I appreciate it. Puts his paper down. For, Time to eat. For those oh, that didn't wait. know, the banquets uh, are always cheering the via bits cut. is the number puts one paper down on the table. Uh, way um, to support the stream, and then because one hundred percent of the back your revenue to goes to me. Man, I like that. Whereas subs, I have to, I have to share with Twitch. Um, so, Mr. Moore will shrug and get up and walk towards the banquet hall. Okay. Yeah, I guess Fred would hear the gong and he would start moseying on to where the noise came from, or like towards the banquet hall. Sure. Everyone else but, over there, or no? He he would be he would be looking out for that little ba little black kitty cat. Are there little kitty cats yeah, or are they all the I monsters? Okay, uh, you get to the bank well, there, there, There's there's tables for you know, if you guys sit at a table, it'll accommodate all five all of you. Um, and then you see the, uh, the Mr. Karakov, Monsieur Karakov. Uh, he's at a table with that that big portly gentleman. You see the woman. A uh, little stern, stern-looking woman in the Elizabethan uh, dress with a high collar, uh, red. It's a, like a red dress. You look like it might, may, might be made out of silk with a, a significant number of petticoats underneath. Um, and uh, she's sitting at her own table. She's got a uh, like some sort of azil sitting er, with her on the table. So yeah, you guys get in there and you, you sit down and uh, up on the board, there's this uh, wooden board. It looks, it's, it looks like it might be a chalkboard or something. It's engravements all along the sides of it, um, and it's blank uh, until everyone sits down. And once everyone sits down, uh, Henry comes out. Uh, there's like a, a partition in the back, like the back upper, back right corner per se, where uh, he comes out of it. looks like that's where the kitchen is. Like, this evening, the menu, and you look up on the board, and it starts writing itself out on the board of what the menu would be. Huh. You got cream hey, of turtle soup, thanks for the biddies, but grilled yeah, elephant uh, pads, cheering, stuffed like, with truffles and You know, you get, you get fun Spit stuff for supporting pheasant, through either, either method. Partridge. Like, if you're a sub, you get Boar's all, head all of our uh, fruits, Twitch emotes. Nuts and spices, um, you also get a the subscriber crown robes, show off how awesome sauces, you are. But uh, if you cheer, eventually you get cheer badges as for well. Every and those are permanent. So even if you lapse your subscription, You'll always yeah, keep the your, of or your cheer badge, right. and when you hit certain Those, milestones, uh, they're like a cheers, champagne. You unlock exclusive. Uh, they emotes match that well with the uh, roasted, unless the they've also met that tier. Pheasant, and, quail, and uh, cartridge. I don't know. I think cheers. Uh, are they're from the Carla uh, Cartharian so, hills and produced with red same, wine yeah. and Mount Arian. We're supposed to be listening. <laughs> the Zoo Moon Tree wine is poured from a. It's, it's a gourd and it's like fermented sap with, from a uh, haunted trees. Uh, which grows from the tree, uh, it grows from the seeds that are dropped by someone from the, on the moon. So basically, they're moon trees, and that's uh, the wine from it. Yeah, I want to try the moon trees. 
Oh, this is uh, all very fine and all, but uh, I, I am a simple man. I prefer something uh, much more plain. Well, um, unfortunately, this is what the cooks are making this evening. Um, hopefully, you'll be able to make do with uh, what it is that we have on the dinner menu this evening. Um, if you want something plain, I'm sure they can accommodate you with you uh, after the fact. But they are all fully dedicated to getting uh, these items created for uh, you all to see. And I hope you will uh, at least try something on this menu. Uh, be wary of the, uh, he looks at Brandon, he's like, I appreciate you wanting to try the Moon Tree Wine. Um, it, it does take a certain amount of fortitude to um, hold that one, if, if that makes sense. If you still wish to, to imbibe it, by all means you can. I'm just giving you fair warning. Um, i I'll take the I'll take what Brandon's having, and then as far as the the grub goes, I'll go with whatever your favorite is. Uh, on the topic of the drink menu, I have a question. It says that for a drink, you can have a pearl of wave washed metal dissolved in the vinegar of thra thrace. Is that like thrace grease? Like yes. But what what is uh, what is this like? I, I I know what some of these words mean, but they don't make sense in the way that they are listed here. Okay. What is it you would like me to explain? Well, like what what kind of drink is this? It's a wine. And and what does it what does it taste like? Is it a red? Is it a, is it white? It's a, it's like it's like a it's like a sparkling. Red, the pinks of, of white. A sparkling is so it's non alcoholic? No, it's alcoholic. Um, okay. Uh, also, I've never had pheasant before, but I'm assuming it, it you know, big poultry. It, 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 does it taste like chicken? Um, um, it's more um, dry on the on that. Oh. It's not. It's a little more uh, gamey because it's a smaller bird. Well, that doesn't sound good at all. Uh, the way we prepare it is is quite nice. Uh, the elephant pad, though, is is magnificent. I don't know how I feel about eating an elephant's uh, pad stuffed with truffles. I'm quite all right. Well, uh, the boar's head a la mode, also a, a wonderful choice. No, no, don't I? Uh, Oh dear. Well, the fruits, nuts, and spices, you can't go wrong with that. It's a lot the end. Uh, they are, uh, they're good. They're known for their uh, wonderful fruits. Of fruit. Yes, yes. I, I suppose that would be a very safe order, yeah? But what are, where is the Siddharthian Groves? I'm not familiar with that location. Um, we have not, uh, we're not going to be reaching that location on our trip. Uh, the train does not follow that path. Um, we will, uh, we'll be bordering the edge of it, uh, further down the train tracks, but, uh, presently we are not in the Sarlathian, or Sarlathria area. Right. Well, thank you for answering all my questions. I, uh, wh what is your name, sir? I'm Henri. We, we, we met. Ah, well, and if I have any more menu-related questions, would I be able to, to call you over? Yes. Oh, okay, so um, Fred, you do see the uh, the black cat. Um, while uh, Henry is here Surprising talking, you he really looks like long. he's trying to <laughs> sneakily make his way into the kitchen. The cat is trying to sneak into the kitchen. Yes. Like he's waiting for the like you. You'll see the door open and close, and on the and when the door opens and closes. You just see platters floating in the air uh, towards specific tables. So, like, there's a, there's a, just a, and you see plates moving from the tray down to the table. Uh, there is no server there, just, you know, floating through the air straight in front of the, the person. Uh, you can see that the woman has already gotten her food, uh, as have the, 
as has Monsieur Karkov and the portly man. They're already, uh, their food is being delivered to them. Okay, um, I guess seeing this, Fred would try to distract the guy a little bit more, to give it to the shenanigans, and um, he would uh, just ask, like, what's what's an elephant pad? Like, what's, what's the pad of an elephant? Uh, it is the uh, it is the, the underside of the foot is the pad of, of the the elephant, and uh, what we've been able to do is uh, you're not necessarily eating the husk; it's just cooked within the pad itself. You're not eating that. You're actually just eating the sweet, uh, the sweet uh, breads and uh, the truffles that are within. Oh, okay, it's okay. A little bit of meat on the inside of the pad. It's, it's, it's like a heartier beef flavor. If you've had like a like a buffalo, it's a similar to a buffalo sort of flavor. Um, okay, okay. And uh, what kind the of sweetness of the truffles and and the bread? Uh, mingles very well with the the meat that's inside of it to, to make it uh, just marvelous. It's a marvelous meal. Okay, what kind of a uh, turtle is in the turtle suit? Oh, um, that one is. Uh, I believe we are using for that uh, sea turtle. Yes, sea turtle is, is what's being used. And what you what you'll see when we bring that out in this this giant bowl, uh, you'll see, you've actually see. Um, Karakov has a bowl in front of him. It's steaming with, you know, you, you can smell it from where you're at, and it smells pretty good. But you can see, like, you know, the the paddle feet for for sea turtles. They're actually sticking out over the sides. Um, Aww. <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 you can you, you can you can tell it's Whoa! those aren't just uh, Ribos coming with the five thousand fifty. Thank you very much, it, dude. And you can, Appreciate you can see it. Like eating the meat outside, out of the, the the leg that's there. Well, uh, like I said before, I'll just take whatever your favorite is. Uh, the pack. I would definitely bring you the pack. So John, then... John kind of puts his hand up in front of his face. He's like covering his nose. Could you not put that behind me? So, I'm sorry. What? That the tur- I can't think Tur- about it. Gonna... <laughs> um, I suggest you not look at him uh, if, you, if you're not if that dis- disturbs you. Maybe just rotate your seat so you're not not staring at. But him. now all I can think about is it's it. <laughs> and what would you like, uh, Mister Moore? I will take the spit roasted pheasant quill and partridge, and I'll try the wines of Sarah Pittman and the Carson Hills. Okay. Very good. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I was like, I'll, I'll get the elephant and the, uh, and the, and the pearls. Pearls, yes. And uh, Mr. Crumb is getting the elephant, and are you getting the pearls as well, or are you getting the, the, uh, the, the Sarah? Oh, I was uh, I was gonna get that moon tree wine as uh, you know the same yeah. as Brandon over here. Sure. Okay. Uh, Brandon, you're getting you, you were getting the moon tree wine as well, Brand, Brandon. Oh yeah, actually, yeah, I'll get that. Okay. And then he finally turns to you, John. Uh, uh, hopefully, your stomach has settled. Uh, is there something you would like? Mm-hmm. Just, John. just the nuts. Mr. Every just just the nuts and and, and the fruit. The nuts, very very well. Um, anything to drink? Water. Water. We can do water. And he kind of uh, turns around, and right as he turns around, you can see the the cat starting to. The door opens, and the cat's starting to. You know, it's a it's a polished floor, so he doesn't get immediate grip immediately. He, he kind of you know, scratches for a second, and then starts running running towards the door as it's starting to close. Henry turns like, Blackjack, stop us right there. Can't you see this? The kitten kind of look around and he, he knows he's caught. He's just like, and he just, he just freezes. For just a moment. And he's just like, uh, and then uh, he, he goes and picks up the cat. He, he puts him in his hand. And he you can tell from the tone of voice, he's kind of admonishing the cat for trying to sneak into the kitchen. And, uh, then he he puts it to the guy. The he puts it back on the ground. Then goes in the kitchen and walks away. And you can tell you can tell the cat's a little 
you know, chastened for a moment. He's just like looking sad. He was kind of staring at the ground. And then, then he gets distracted by something. He just shoots off. Oh, blackjack. Um, is there, is there any like starters on our on our table? Like any like. Bread. I guess biscuits, bread. Okay. Yes, there's 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 various breads. There's a there's like a cucumber, you know, sweet sweet bread, as well as some some dinner rolls, and uh, all warm, warm enough that if you spread the the soft butter on it, it melts immediately and soaks into the bread. Um, there's also a pitcher of water for you, so if you wanna, excuse me, if you wanted to drink some water, you could drink that. That sounds good, actually. Um, after just moments, the food that you ordered comes out to you. You know, the, the, uh, the fruits and nuts and spices are, are from the Sabarathian are put in front of, uh, Mr. Everyman. Uh, the elephant is placed in front of Brandon and Fred. And you can see it's, it, it's a foot of an elephant. Like, just like where we would, maybe we would cut at the ankle. And, uh, you can see the, the pad. Looks like a, it might be like a, you know, just like it's 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 steam, it like the, it's steamed up a little bit. And as you insert your knife into the, the where the steam is, you see just a, a wave of steam come out, and it's flooded of these sweet and savory smells. As it just annihilates your mouth, your nose. This is just a beautiful, beautiful flavor. And then the pheasants, quail, and, and partridge. The three of them are just split roast, you know. Uh, in these small little splits, in like a triangle pattern, um, uh, you can see the, the the bodies of each one of them. They they they're all you know the small chicken, uh, quail, and you know the in, in in formation. You can see there's there's a burner under each one of them, like a small little like coal to keep them warm as these uh, these spits continue to turn even as they set them down. It's just, you know, and, and you can see like these, uh, these red and green and, and uh, orange like juices encumbering at e each one of them. And as you taste one, the green, yeah, the green one is, is like a, uh, it's like a citrusy sort of flavor that goes on the pheasant. The quail has a sort of um, like a, is the is the the red one it's like a, a barbecue flavor and then the orange one is like a spicy spicy flavor on the on the partridge the quail is more of the barbecue and the, the pheasant is more of like the citrus mm. and what about my nuts talk about my your nuts, nuts. Oh, yes i'm sorry your nuts let me talk about your nuts and fruits <laughs> these are fruits and nuts you've never seen before in your life they uh they're a deep they're a deep purple, like a like a color of a, a red grape, but they're significantly larger, more of the size of a like an apple. Um, and if you cut into that one, instead of there being a core, it's just like a cut straight through. So it's as soft as a grape would be, um, but it's not as uh, it doesn't taste anything like a grape. It'd be like a mix between an apple and um, and a kiwi. But no sort of uh, acidic taste to it, just the flavor and no, no acid aspect of it. So uh, very, very, uh, it's a savory kind of taste, which is bizarre for it to come from, from the fruits. Uh, the nuts are, are, uh, are, are infused with like, like a smoke sort of flavor uh, with a... Uh, They're salty, but not overly, and not overpowering in, in any way, shape, or form. You can smell, like, as you bring one up to your nose, it's, a, again, it's a weird-looking nut, not like a nut in a regular way. But you can smell the, the smoke infusion into it, and it smells uh, heaven. And it's just uh, all sorts of sweets and, 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 and salties um, rolled into one. It's coming off just the smell of it, and as you taste it, you can feel the, um, the rush of of the the sweet and the salt mixing together in a perfect cacophony of taste in your mouth. Hopefully you like those nuts. I love them. Okay. Best nuts I ever had. Excellent. I'm glad. I'm glad. Okay. Um, 
So yeah, you guys enjoy your meals there. Mostly. I, I tried to focus on, on my very good tasting fruits and nuts and not look at the elephant's foot and, and the turtle fins and... Sure. Um, those you, you you had two people drink the moon wine. That was Mr. Moore and uh, Brandon. Yeah. So, all right. I need con roll from you and Mr. Moore. Well, okay. Um, as you eat your 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 elephant foot. Or elven pad, and um, uh, Fred, give me a uh, Constitution roll for drinking the moon tree wine. Okay. No, not Fred. I'm sorry. Um, oh. I thought David. Oh, sorry. I'm I'm not paying attention. I need David Moore to do one. You didn't drink the moon tree wine, did you? you drank- I did. I you ordered did. it. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Then then good. you drank the, the moon tree wine. You con save. So Moore will need to do a con roll when he gets back. Um. Brandon, as the night goes on, or as the banquet goes on, you, for some reason, I mean, everyone, you, you know you're sleeping somewhere else in the real world, but you you just are overcome with the need to go back to your cabin and just pass out. Yeah, guys, I'm getting pretty oh, I'm tired. I think I'm going to go pass out. So, yeah, you're just really tired, and... Um, when you get back to your cabin, you know, there's a bed made out for you. It's a large uh, queen-size bed that only takes up about half the room that you're in. Um, when you fall into it, it's like falling into a, a, a bed of, of uh, feathers. Uh, just a bed of down with no any kind of no kind of points or anything that would, you know, would normally uh, impact you. And it's just like you sink in about you know, six inches into this, into this uh, bed. And then you put on the comforters and just Put you at the right temperature as your head pokes out, and you fall asleep uh, to a night of blissful dreams. The most blissful and wonderful of dreams you've ever had. Okay. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. To see if more gets back, if he passes the same or not. Maybe I'll just roll it for him. I'll roll. He fails, the same thing happens to him. Oh no. What happens to me? I just take it like a champ. You take it like a champ, 100%. You drink it, uh, and it tastes you... great. I love the taste of fermented sap. I never knew I knew that do I'd like the taste of fermented sap. This is amazing. If I see if I see blackjack, then I would definitely offer him a little table scrap. Oh, he uh he's you know you know moving between the tables. You see a you see a section in the in the the banquet hall where all the cats are, and you see there's you know all sorts. You see the the savannah cats and the and the all the other cats that are there, and you see blackjack there, and he's kind of with this larger black and white spotted cat. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's his mom. And uh, do you try and get blackjack's attention? You should see him over there. Yeah, he's yeah. I guess I'll be like a hey, blackjack. You know, I, w- I wouldn't go kitty kitty. I would, you know, because he- Fred doesn't want to seem condescending because these cats seem to have some sort of, I guess, uh, what's the word? You know, yeah, intelligence. Um, something I don't have apparently. Uh, <laughs> but he would be like a, a, a blackjack. He'll pick perk his head up and look over towards you. Uh,. Do you want to try some of uh, my food here? He, he he looks at his mom, who shoots at him for a second, and he looks back at you, looks back at her, and looks back at you, and then stands up and kind of, he doesn't really run towards you. He kind of does that hop, jump, run thing, where he, he every two or three steps, he's like hopping towards you. His hair, his tail is switching back and forth. Like he's very happy. You know, someone's paying attention to me other than, than, than Henry and my mom. Yay. And he comes over to you, and he's just kind of looking up at you. Uh, I will take a very small. Uh, like I'll, I'll actually, I'll take a. Uh, do I have any meat on my plate? Like, because you know, I'm, what did you, you order? said that I, I ordered the grilled elephant pad, mm-hmm. stuffed yeah. the truffles and sweetbreads, mm-hmm. but there was, there was meat on the inside that mixed with uh, 
with the um okay the i would share i would share my food i would you know get out uh you know my spoon put some meat on it and then just like you know hold it out for him to eat it off of the spoon directly okay um he does like every other cat he'll sniff it for a few moments and then he'll kind of lick it a few times and then then once he realizes he likes it he just pump right on it it's gone food's gone spoon's empty nice um fred i'm gonna explain to you what happened to you uh, you weren't here for the con save so i rolled it for you unless you want to re-roll it i'm okay with it if you want to re-roll it. oh let's <laughs> put my fate in my hand yeah, sure, six is pretty, pretty, hand. pretty good yeah you, sh- you should have a fair chance yeah <laughs> you're... wait wait yeah you passed then you failed so we're gonna go oh, to the second yeah, you just we'll clicked it twice so oh, my, i didn't hear it going on all right so i clicked it once you succeeded so you didn't what happened is basically if you failed you got really tired and went back you know what happened to brandon he he went back to his cabin and fell asleep and he's having a wonderful dream about whatever yes. most blissful for him trains yes he's having a blissful dream about trains no, <laughs> I highly doubt that. no, no not trains <laughs> I, I doubt that. um yeah he's he's asleep in the cabin now it's just the three of you at the table for drinking that uh, moon tree wine. Um, so yeah, the, the cat happily eats the food off your your, your uh, spoon and then he starts doing the, the zigzag underneath the, the underneath the, the chair, you know, he's, he's, he's rubbing up against the, the legs of the chair, you know, and then he's looking up at you expectingly again for more food. Yeah, I would definitely share my food with him. Okay. I'd, I'd get like you know those like little uh the little plates i guess that come with the bread and everything that go with uh, fancy restaurants sure yeah i would i would scoop some up there and put it on the plate and put it down for him he starts eating it um uh after you know 30 45 minutes of you guys being here um uh, he starts you know he's there he's eating and then you see the cats start to just you know break off and go most of them are going back towards where you guys know the cat cabin is, and then some of them are, it looks like the, the, the savannas didn't have enough uh, water earlier, so you see all the savannas kind of herding towards the uh, uh, front. You can suspect they're going back towards the bath the bathhouse cart. Um, and uh, you see the black and white spotted cat walk up to where Blackjack is, and you see, you, you see that cat shittering at Blackjack a few times. And he looks at you, he looks at his, uh, the, the cat, and he's like, and he just kind of turns and walks away with her. You can, you have a feeling it's it's bedtime for Blackjack. <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so the, the, the you guys have about you know, three or four hours to, to uh, the next stop, the Dilothleen. Does anyone want to do anything on I would like to go to the, our sleeping compartment, away mm-hmm. from all the really gruesome and gross food. Sure, sure. <laughs> or we'll go get a nap in before their next stop. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, Fred, what would you like to do? I'll go to the men's saloon. Go to the men's saloon, all right. Yeah, again, there's just drinks there. Uh, there's the portly man there, as well as uh, Monsieur Karkov. Uh, they're enjoying uh, some brandy and uh, chat. What are they talking about? Various things. Can I eavesdrop? Like, just, like, you know, like, kind of sit away, like, you know, ne- like, not right next to them, but, like, a few feet away and just kind of enjoy my drink and see what they're talking about. Um, sure, if you'd like. Um, yeah. Uh, so you guys, you're sitting there. Um, and uh, Max is like, oh, well, you have it wrong there, Karkov. And the way I see it, in, in a century from now, maybe even less, professional sports would really be popular in the world. I can tell you, cricket. Cricket is going to take over the world. It's gonna, it's gonna be the the number one sport for every country in the in the world. And Karakov's like, no, no, no way, my friend, no way. 
uh, cricket is too a pompous, too pompous of a game for anyone to, to want to play on a worldwide scale. If anything, it's going to be it's going to be that that football game that was created. Uh, that seems to be very popular. No, no, soccer, no, or do they mean football? They mean they mean football as in soccer. These guys are not, not Americans. Um, you know, it's going to be that football game that's so popular. Um, there's that World Cup that I think they're creating at some point. Fred will, I guess, chime in and he'll think that he's talking about like American football. And he's like, "Yeah, I love football." Yeah, that's, wait. Yeah, no, I love when they score a touchdown. Did the NFL exist in 1920? What? What? The NFL? Mm-hmm. No, it didn't exist back then. But the, what? The NFL didn't, but football did. Football, football did. Football did. Hey, cricket no. did. Uh, in 1920, 10 football teams gathered in Canton, Ohio to create the American Professional Football Association, which will later become the NFL. Yeah. So yeah, football. we have That's... national football. Yeah. It's hey. Not really um, yeah. Um, I just got so... excited because I looked it up and it said Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did me? Oh, oh. <laughs> That's what the Football Hall of Fame is, man. Yeah. Um, well, I don't sports. Yeah, you know, like yeah. uh, you know, he's like, they're, so they're talking about you know, it's cricket, and then you, you chime in with, "I love football." Oh yes. Um, what 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 what's uh what side are you for? I name off a random team that was back then, then in the 1920s in America, because I have no idea. Canton, well, can, you, know, you say Canton, Canton, Canton. Okay. Sure. Can, Canton. Um, what country is that in? I don't. I don't quite know that. Oh, let's. Uh, uh, I apologize. That's in. That's in America. Oh, the Americans have a football team. That's. That's certainly interesting. The only country that matters. Yeah. <laughs> And then he'll start, you know, explaining like, yeah, yeah, we've got we've got football over there, and you got your touchdowns, and you got your. your they look at you, and they're like, oh, 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 and then the portly man's like, oh, um, you mean the American football game that started uh, several years ago? Ah, no, you yeah. mean football? <laughs> the ones with those 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 weird leather caps and the the striped shirts with the numbers on them. Oh, yes, those are weird. Um. We're not talking about that game. We're talking about the one with where they have the eleven players on the on the on each side of the of the pitch, and um, you have the goal on each side with a man in front of him. He's called the goalkeeper. His his job is to keep this this ball usually black and white. In, 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 or, 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 oh, or, you're you're talking about uh, soccer. Soccer, yes, that is the the name you are using. Ah, yes, indeed. Well, yeah, soccer. Soccer is pretty good. Uh, I, I was never much of a cricket fan. I apologize, Mr. Hood. I just, uh, you know, it's not very. Parkov you know, hits you on the, on the side of the shoulder, kind of like, yeah. So this this one this one's got it. Cricket is too too uh, too much of a rip, rich man's sport. We yeah. would never catch on to to the worldwide. Uh, you know, the American football is 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 uh, is interesting, and you know, uh, just soccer. As she he said, <laughs> is uh, is is probably going to catch up, and so they're just having a lively discussion about sports. And uh, throughout the the course of the conversation, that that for the next couple hours, you realize that the man you're speaking to, the portly gentleman, uh, he's got um, he's got you know uh, mutton chops, all white, white hair parted off to the right, uh, just wearing a military jacket with a, a gray vest, a white shirt, and a black bow tie, uh, is a Mr. Mac McKenzie. He's, he, his name is McKenzie. He goes by Mac. He's one of the guys who, who boarded the train. Okay. Oh, wait. The the original train or the dream train? The dream train. He was at okay. the dream stop. It was Mac. Uh, okay. Yeah, what, am, what am I dreaming about in my dream train on the dream train? <laughs> uh, whatever blissful dream an 18-year-old would have. I don't want to speculate. Oh no! But uh, after a, a certain, you know, some time, um, David wakes up. Um, right as you guys, you feel the. You're not really. 
feel like you, you can tell the inertia of the train is starting to slowly slow down. And uh, you come up to another stop. Is it time for the funky fear rituals? The, the funky fear rituals. Yeah, we're going to make totems and chuck them out the window. N no. Uh, you come up to the, the next stop, which is Dulathne, which is what he told you about. You see a mostly black, if you're looking out the window, you see that the train station is a mostly black bait uh, made of uh, black uh, basalt. Uh, it's got uh, a city with small angular towers uh, in the distance. Uh, the streets look dark and uninviting as you pull in. It looks like there's a. It's on the ocean there, so it looks like there's a myriad of uh, dwarfs, and, or myriad and dwarfs, not red dwarfs, dwarfs and other docks throughout this area with uh, sea taverns and whatnot. Strange seamen. Uh, walking around, and uh, there's some inhabitants with odd robes, and all look like sullen and sad. And you see the train come to a stop. You see uh, Henry pop out on the train station. Okay. Uh, would you like to do anything? Me personally, no. <laughs> Anybody? Uh, I guess I'll explore. And get out. As you walk out onto the train tra train station, uh, Henry turns to you and is like, "Um, well, it makes sense for you to get off the train and, and stretch your legs for a little bit. I would recommend not um, exploring the city here. It is quite dangerous." Um, and I don't want you to get lost if you, because we will be leaving on time at uh, 2 a.m. So if you just stay near the train tracks, wouldn't necessarily go into any of the bars in the area. Uh, I don't, I, I don't want you to anything bad to come across the people that I transport. Well, do you, uh, do you have a map? Map. Uh, I'm afraid. Not. I'm afraid not. I don't have a map. Uh, don't have the... Is there a uh, like a traveling? Uh, like a travel agency nearby within map, it, like at like the train stop. The, no, I don't believe so. No, there's no 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 maps of this city. Uh, the, the denizen of this area have the area you know known to their memories. Um, I don't really uh, walk around in this area. I don't believe in even these specific maps for civilian use, if that makes sense. Ah, okay, okay. Um, as as you're standing there talking to Henry, you see this man walk on the train. Um, he's uh, he looks, you know, a very lean figure, uh, dark hair, pallid skin. Uh, there's something odd about him. His eyes, though, they don't seem to have any kind of pupils or irises or anything. Just a, a expanse of, of you know, like glistening yellow <laughs> in his eyes, uh, and he seems to just walk on the train. He uh, shows Henry his, his ticket and walks on the train. Uh, additionally, you see um, you smell something putrid as you're as you're standing there. And um, it's just it's just like, what is that smell? And Henry you can kind of, just, you can smell, you can see, see, tell uh, that Henry um, is um, he's just trying oh. to did you did you did you fart? I mean, I, I get it, but man, did you, uh, beef, you, bro? Did, did you beef, bro? Like, I'm afraid the, the, the beings of Eve are, are going to be boarding. Uh, and you see, as he says that, these these green, like, think. I didn't hear what he said. He's, he's cutting formless. Out. I'm sorry. You, I didn't hear what you've been saying. You're cutting out. I'm oh, sorry. The there's. These green molding, these green slimes, it seemed to be like peaks of slime. They almost look like they're waffling back and forth as they move up the, the up the uh, the train stop steps. You know, kind of like just slowly oh, coming up. Jello, uh, like Jello, yeah, a lot like Jello, very much like Jello. And um, then there's this green puff ball that's kind of sitting on top of one of them. Um, and it's they slowly 
move into the train. They're not going in the sleep compartment. They're going into where the baggage compartment was. Um, yeah, so they're, they're, they have gone that, that way. Uh, Fred, actually, I need a sanity roll because you've not seen slime creatures before. So... Good job, Fred. Okay, you're fine. I mean, you've seen blood and guts. You know, slime monsters. Okay. That's weird. I mean, you know, we're getting carried around on a train powered by tentacles, and I just ate some... Allegedly. Hey, I got a crit. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's all part of a, the mass delusion. Oh, are you out there as well, Brandon? Brandon, were you out there as well? Yeah, I would have followed through. Okay. Uh, well, um... Oh, well, you, it's not... It's a critical failure. Oh, wait, no, I was asleep all night. I couldn't have called the group. Yeah, that's right. You're yeah, sleeping. Wait. Yeah, you went out there. Is anyone, everyone else out there? I thought only Fred went outside. Did anyone else go I'm outside? I'm not out there. Extra I'm just probably getting ready <laughs> right about now. Okay. So it's just Fred outside. Okay, that's good. Oh, no. Uh, did you say, did you say that any of the other passengers got off as well? No, no one has gotten off. It's just okay, all right. on the side there. Um, after three or four moments, uh, the six uh, people approach. Uh, they look very handsome um, or beautiful. Um, they seem to be laughing, and um, they're, you know, they, they got the, uh, the, the. They're very pompous looking, but very elegant in the in the way they 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 uh, appear. Um, they're very, uh, you, they look like they got, uh, they, they, you know, their shit don't stink or something like that. Very uh, arrogant looking, if that's a thing. And they, uh, they glide onto the train. And then, uh, like legitimately glide, or it just seems like they're gliding because they're just so graceful. There's no sort of, uh, there's no sort of uh, cadence to this. There's no stepping, no, no kind of uh, oscillating with the body. It's just a sheer gliding onto the train. So we're, who are, just to uh, be who are those sure, people? you're not describing graceful movements. They are literally hovering their way. No, I'm, I'm describing graceful movements okay. per se. You can't tell if they're gliding or if they're walking. Oh, oh okay. All right. This is wonderful. All right. Um, oh, that's the uh, sonata. Uh, I'm not sure. I think they're in negotiations with the uh, Ib for uh, some sort of peace treaty or uh, yeah something along those natures nature I'm not really sure what the politics are between the Sarnathians and the, the delegation uh, but we're taking them I think they're going to do some negotiations in the train until we get down to the uh, to the capital once we get to the capital I'm pretty sure they're going to be. now these names are they uh do they, do they sound like they're from Earth or Dreamland? They do not sound Earthian. Okay, all right. Uh-huh. And well, I suppose every every world has their dumb politics. Mm, yes, indeed, indeed. Um, well, um, I think we've, we've fully... Let's see here, I'm just, he's checking. There's boxes that he's checking with. Um, <coughs> you see... You know, boxes of spun wool and iridescent textiles being loaded onto the train. Um, and then he's taken boxes off of uh, you know, various various types of things that are being left for, for this, you know, the, the people here. Um, you see a woman running up to the train. And she uh, looks like a, what you might think a gypsy might look like. Uh, a little more put together than that. And she runs up and says, Oh, thank God I didn't miss the train. Oh, what it would be. It would be terrible to be stuck in Dublin for another, another couple of days until you get back. Oh. Well, Henry, I, I must go to my cabin. And she runs in. Okay, so we're alone now. Mm hmm. Okay, uh, I, uh, Henry, um, I got a, I got a little bit of a weird question for you, you know. We're surrounded by oddities and stuff, and I suppose it wouldn't be out of the ordinary. Uh, have you heard of the, uh, the, 
simulacrum. The set of cards. Set of cards. So, set of Gar oh, yeah, that, that one right there. Thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I don't believe not. No, I have not. Uh, that's not something that I ever came across from, from either train, either in in the Orient or here. No. Okay. All right. I was just curious. Because uh, we're, we're looking for, for something like that. Alright. So, uh, yeah, I was, I was just curious if you had ever heard of it or, you know, or anything like that, but thank you. Uh, and then Fred's just gonna go ahead and ask him if he needs any help. I know we're uh, about to get, uh, get moving. If you want to hop back on the train, we will keep you on our way. Alright. And then he's gonna hop back on the train and mosey on back, back in. Okay. Um, Okay, um, so you get on the um, you get on the train. It's it's Rivers, starts to brother, move. Thank you for coming and, through tonight, man. You the MVP. And you're getting your uh, resting, relaxing, what not. The train moves its way to the next, next destination, Bazaar, and um, on its way there, you all seem to wake back up on the Orient Express the next day, as if you 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 you're blinking your eyes every now and then on the on the dreamland express the next thing you know you're, you wake up and blinking your eyes and you're you're on the orient again um fred would immediately check his holster you have a, you have a long sword in there Wait. oh i no longer have a gun i have a long sword i need everyone to give me an intelligence check to see if you remember what happened in dreamland in Oh, have I woken up yet? Yeah, you guys, you guys all wake up on the Orient Express. Aha! Oh, wow. What? There we go. So, only, uh, only Mr. Moore doesn't remember. So you guys get to the the breakfast of the oh, Orient Express. Can I use five points of luck? Yeah, you use five points of luck on that. Okay, so you all four remember what happened on the uh, the night before in the Dreamland. You, 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 you're. You remember you were able to recall what happened and and all of that stuff. So you have a day on the train of the Orient as you make your way towards Lusain, and that is where we will stop today. We are still on the train to Lusain. Very good. Thank you for keeping us alive. Yeah, mm. we didn't mm -hmm. die. Indeed. <laughs> Don has survived an entire session now. <laughs> so far, so good. I'm just surprised you guys made that intelligence save. Or all that stuff. Listen, I always make my intelligence saves, which is why I'm always going insane. Right. Right. That's true. <laughs> You're a very smart person. You and uh, John. Yes. You gotta start making John every man go insane. All right. Well, thank you all for coming and hanging out. Appreciate you being here. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed the, the stream. If you did, make sure you hit that follow button. If you haven't already uh join us in the discord that's where we hang out but we even if you don't care for adventures league or the west marches we hang out we talk about D, &D and other tabletop games we have a good time uh come and chit chat get involved in the community and uh if you're interested in viewing more check out my youtube all of our past streams are uploaded there you can see all of the thousands and thousands of hours of content and and uh, stories that we've told and uh yeah definitely give it a like and a follow uh thank you all again and i will see you on wednesday at seven for curse of Strahd. it's gonna be a great time bye everyone